I'd like to welcome our guest, Peter Schiff. Peter, thanks for taking the time out of your busy schedule. Hey, Rick, great to be on with you. All right, you know, in uh, my tease for this piece, I said, you know, what's going to have a longer shelf life, Kiwi or a Twinkie? What's your answer? <laughs> well, eventually, Kiwi is going to come to an end. Uh, not, but, not because Ben Bernanke uh, wants to end it, but because the markets finally leave him no choice. You know, I think all the talk about tapering is talk. I think Ben Bernanke knows more QE, but not because the economy needs it. I mean, monetary stimulus is the last thing that we need. I mean, that's the reason we had a housing bubble. That's why there was a financial crisis. That's why this recovery is so weak. And that's why, that's why the next crisis is going to be worse than the last one. The Fed is creating it with its monetary policy. Now, many have used the analogy that what's going on with Ben Bernanke versus the market in, in a sort of fashion resembles the Bank of England's issues with George Soros when George Soros challenged and, and, but via his trading of the British pound. Do you think that analogy works? Well, I think eventually you're going to see uh, a real attack on the dollar and on the U.S. Treasury market and the Fed's ability to maintain artificially low interest rates without destroying the dollar. I mean, we're going to come to that point. It's not there yet. And I think one of the reasons that Ben Bernanke had to do some damage control uh, as far as talking back uh, tightening is because he's already uh, very nervous about the reaction that he didn't anticipate in the bond market and how it's going to affect mortgage rates and the, the, the housing bubble that he's trying to reflate. Peter, one of the, uh, the, the trading venues that handicaps the future uh, had the top three uh, post, or, uh, people in line for the chairmanship is Janet Yellen, and then the second and third were pretty close between Larry Summers and Tim Geithner. Out of those three, uh, who would your choice be, if any? I don't know. Look, the good news is Ben Bernanke is leaving. The bad news is one of those three is going to replace him. Uh, you know, I don't know. I, 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 I suppose whoever uh, they end up going with will probably be the worst. Uh, but, you know, you don't really have, you don't really leave me any good choices there. So I don't even know how to answer that question. If you were trading 10-year you know, notes right now, worse. <laughs> if you were trading 10-year notes right now, we're almost out of time. Uh, would you be trading on the same side of the card for the next couple of weeks of the Fed, or would you wait to challenge the way the market seemed to several weeks ago? Well, you know, obviously. Uh uh, the yields have backed up quite a bit in a short period of time. So a short-term trader, you know, it might be hard to just, you know, continue to short uh, the bond market. But I think that's the big trade. If people are looking for, you know, what's the next potential subprime, other than, you know, buying uh, some of the beaten down gold stocks, I mean, I think shorting treasuries is, 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 the, is the way to go. Eventually, the Fed is going to lose control of this. And I think the biggest danger is when you start to see the bond market and the dollar selling off simultaneously, you throw in a rally in gold, and that's basically, you know, the triple threat. You've got all the warning bells that the end is near.